Uh, welcome to a new video. A few weeks ago, Sony promised Android 13 update for their Mark IV lineup, and it arrived now here on my Xperia 1 Mark IV, and I want to show you the brand new features of this release. So let's get started. As usual, Sony didn't provide any change log, at least not on the device itself. They have a change website where they explain some of the new cool features, but I want to talk to you about and show them to you right now. So Android 13 gives them some new features, just like, for example, if I go in here and go to wallpaper and style, I have now the whole flexibility of the new Android color scheming that can take the colors from the wallpaper to give you various different accent colors here, or you have to choose uh, basic colors here as well. You can change the wallpaper as well. Very nice addition for those who like this. And you have more options here as well, like using the dark themes, use themed icons. It's currently in beta still, and you can change even the app grid here. A very nice addition for all of those who like to customize their Android experience on their Xperia devices. Then we have another thing which is called Active Apps. So if you swipe down here and swipe down again, you will see that they changed a little bit the UI. So the buttons that were here for turning off the device or configuring the device are now here at the bottom. Easier to reach, especially on such a tall device as this Xperia. And you can see also notifications coming in from the bottom here, just like this one, and I can swipe them away if I have this opened. And we have a new option here called Four Apps Are Active. And if I click on this, you can see it is listing up all the active applications in the background that are using up my battery. Just like, for example, KD Connect for sharing my files, Vanced Micro for yeah, YouTube Vans, my email client inbox, which is constantly checking if I have new emails, and my BlackBerry Hub Plus services, which is actually the service that is checking for the emails and this one here is only like running in the background and i have the option just with one click to stop this for example or to stop the kd connect client or some other thing that might run in the background it's eating up my battery and it's very cool to see that i have the option to see all the active running applications that are running constantly in the background and eat up a little bit of my power for example very very cool feature indeed that you can find here active apps. Then we have another cool thing also here in the lock screen. You don't find it here, but there's a space now and for a particular new feature, which I already saw on the Zen Phone 9 uh, that is now added also here. It's called scan QR code. So I can bring it over here and have it active now. And let's go back here. Scan QR code allows me to directly scan a QR code. If I click on this, it gives me this uh, option here. And this allows me to scan even QR codes if I'm offline. So I'm able to, for example, scan the QR code for connecting to a Wi-Fi network or something like this. Very, very handy indeed. And I think it has also some options if I press and hold longer here. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, you have this option as well to scan QR codes, which is very cool. Uh, let's go to settings and we go to the apps. And if we are in a specific app setting, for example, YouTube, we have now a new option here, which allows us to set the language for supported applications. Most of the applications are Google applications itself, but I have my system now set to English. If I want to set my YouTube application to be German, for example, which is my native language, I go to language here and I can choose not to use the system default, but to use German here. And if I go in now to the YouTube application, you can see that it's now completely in German. So this is a pretty cool feature that allows you to directly switch the language. You can see it here on the bottom eventually. So yeah, to switch the language for certain applications. I like to do this, I have my system usually in English, but for example, Google Maps or something like this, I like to use in German because the navigation uh, voice assistant that will navigate me uh, has to speak German. Of course, I know you can change it also in the settings, but um, yeah, the whole app to be German, for example, is, is a nice addition. And you can do this uh, with other applications. If you want a certain application to be in a different language, you have the possibility to do so. So this also works the other way around. If I have a German system and I want to have this one app, this particular app 
in English. Um, you have the possibility to do so. Uh, let's go to the next one, which is uh, safety and emergency, which is, I think, a new feature here. Safety and emergency, and we have the possibility to add some safety and emergency options. I'm not sure if this is completely new, but we have the personal safety guard here, which allows me also to log in with my data. And uh, this is also a pretty cool feature. Uh, then we have the digital well-being controls being updated for Android 13, of course, with lots and lots of settings here, focus modes that you can set up, do not disturb options that you can set up, parental controls if you want to. So this is the new design and uh, user interface for the digital well-being. And then a very nice feature under security. If I find it now, security and fingerprint, which allows you, where is it? which allows you to set up the, uh, let's see it, let's search for fingerprint, which allows you to, uh, under security, which allows you to press to unlock with fingerprint, an option that is already available for the Xperia 5 Mark IV, which is recording here right now, but now allows you to also use this a uh, very cool feature so you don't have like this accidental ah, you press too much on the fingerprint sensor you have to really press it down so demonstrate it to you let's go back here and go out so usually uh, i unlock just by holding here it's not working it's not reading the finger i have to press and hold and then it will unlock this is a feature that yeah many many of us wished back from the earlier days from the what was it xperia x or something like this xa devices that had those option and uh, or Xperia Z devices even and now it's back here uh, with the Android 13 update which is um, yeah, very very cool and another thing that you just have to believe me with this new Xperia device is the fluidity of the device so Android update updated as well the the fluidity of the device so running smoothly on 120 hertz optimized android 13 here for sure and it's running super super smooth on the xperia 1 mark 4 if you think the android 12 is already very smooth on your xperia 1 mark 4 you will be blown away by this because it's even smoother here on the 1 mark 4 with android 13 and this is basically everything short little video about the new features android 13 on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. I will do a short little camera test still to see if you can see any improvements in terms of camera quality here on the Xperia 1 Mark IV in terms of video and I will show you a few uh, photos as well. So let's go to it. So this is now the Xperia 1 Mark IV and the front-facing camera here, 4K 30, 12 megapixel sensor. Uh, what do you think about the stabilization on Android 13? Did anything change here? I don't think so much. I think it's still a good quality for video recording. Stability is good and also I think that the phone can perform good for selfies as well. I really wish it would have autofocused. It would be like the creme de la creme. But anyways, this is still a good front-facing video camera. What do you think about this one here? So this is now the recording with the Xperia 1 Mark IV and its main camera. The sun is in the background. How good is the quality here in terms of uh, stabilization, colors, HDR and so on? Has anything improved with the Android 13 update here on the Xperia 1 Mark IV? What do you think about this one here? And of course I have the po uh, possibility to zoom out. So now I should be at the ultra wide angle, 16 millimeters here. And what do you think about this one here? I think it's also still okay especially good for vlogging and uh, yeah how about color stabilization do you notice any improvements here in contrast to the earlier version on android 12 so we want to zoom in on something so i have my zoom test something that is non-static uh, that is non-moving so it's static 85 millimeters let's zoom in let's see how stable this is how sharp it is now 125 millimeters and i think it's now quiet nothing going on there anyway let's zoom in further so let's go to the maximum which is 375 millimeters it's a bit shaky i think how is the focus i can like tap to focus to see if this is working but it's super super shaky yeah the focus even the focus indicator is shaking around so let's go to manual focus 
and let's try to manually focus here much much better as you can see here because it's so shaky then the focus is like a little bit yeah having issues here as well but now with manual focus this is what you can get and we can go back to autofocus and we go back to the 24 millimeters and what i will show you right now are some photo samples as well so here we have the photos let's take a quick look so this is the main camera and uh, nothing spectacular i think in terms of sharpness not adding too much sharpness here it's a bit soft on the sides still and the colors look wonderful because they're so realistic this is exactly how it looks like yes we have like autumn or actually it should be winter time already so yeah it is um like this this is a three and a half times zoom looks nice a bit sharpened up as you can see eventually but you can read everything nice and sharp this is five times it's a bit softer as you can see definitely a bit softer here it's 5.2 uh, times zoom and uh, yeah this is not the best we have 10 times zoom looks good but if i zoom in yeah it's falling apart a bit i saw better already and this is 15 times zoom which i think the max you can clearly see the sharpening applied here but i think it's okay still but it's not a real improvement three and a half times zoom yeah fine now five times zoom i think it's a bit tad sharper than it was before maybe it was a bit shaky because of course if you introduce a bit of shake then you have like all these issues here this is 10 times zoom looks still okay you can read everything nicely here again 10 times zoom here i think it's a bit soft as you can see here and uh, yeah dealing also with this it's not the best i would say not clear enough here this is now 15 times zoom and yeah and here it's falling apart yeah up to 10 times i think it's like in a pinch you can still use it but even five times looks already a bit blurred and soft in occasions so nothing has improved here in terms of zoom i would say the focus however is still uh, i think a bit better than it was before and this is the ultra wide angle yeah nice and sharp from one edge to the other edge no issues at all with the ultra wide angle also the colors keep uh, kept close this is 10 times zoom which gives you a nice natural background blur it's not a fake background blur as you can see here also this flower nice and sharp and uh, yeah this is what the 10 times zoom can give you which is very fantastic i would say so yeah you can get very very close to object and have this nice background blur even though as i think it's only the background blur from the five times zoom and the rest is cropping in still good and this is now the main camera I used manual focus here and used manual settings to get this nice and sharp as you can see here it looks very very good and nice and sharp so yeah macro photography or semi metro macro photography or close-up shots like those of flowers of small little flowers are possible how about the autofocus does the autofocus work i also took this shot with autofocus enabled I had to tweak it a little bit disable uh, iaf and enable a continuous autofocus in the manual settings and then um, got this also shutter speed uh, set to high i got this in, uh, this uh, with autofocus so autofocus is also working fine and catching this flower even though it was windy and the yeah the whole thing was shaking like crazy i got this as well yeah the ultra wide angle again like i said it's a bit soft on the sides uh, but it's one of the best ultra wide angles still also hdr i think is doing a respectable job uh, to keep everything like realistic in a way looking but without like blurring out or blooming out a little bit too much here because of too too hot uh, photos so in general i think nothing much has changed here maybe slightly a bit in terms of zoom but the zoom is still likely something that sony has to improve on and i think they have to improve on not only with software but with hardware so i'm expecting them to release a better hardware version with the xperia 1 mark 5.